All right, we're on to page six of the Winter 12 Exam 1 Video Solutions. So in this problem, we're talking about sharing passwords. So teenagers share online passwords with friends or significant others has been relatively common. Um, and from a recent survey of 770 teenagers, 30% reported having shared a password with a friend or significant other. So we need to first compute the corresponding standard error of the estimated proportion of all teenagers who have shared a password with a friend or significant other. So first let's look at the standard error equation. And we can get that from page two of the formula card. Uh, we are in the population proportion section here because we're just working with one population proportion. And this is our standard error right there. All right, so let's go ahead and use that to do the problem. Okay, now we just have to figure out our p hat and our n. So the p hat we're given, the sample here is 30%. And then here we have our n. We sampled 770 teenagers. So use the, those values, we plug them in. So we have 0.3 times 1 minus 0.3 over n which is 770. And if we calculate this out, uh, underneath the square root, you'll have point, uh, th lots of zeros, two, seven, two, seven. And if you take the square root of that, you should get about um, 0 0.0165. And that's our final answer. Okay. Now in part B, we're going to use this uh, to provide a 99% confidence interval to estimate the population proportion of all teenagers who have shared an online password with a friend or significant other. I'm going to report this interval out to two decimal places. All right, so if this procedure, um, well, I mean, so first we need to get the equation for um, the confidence interval. There's our confidence interval equation. And we already know p hat and the standard error of p hat. So the only thing we need to figure out now is our z star. OK. Uh, now, we know the z star typically for 95% is 1.96 or 2. Uh, you, the 99% when we don't typically uh, you know, know that very, know very, uh, are very familiar with. So here we can use uh, the table to look it up. So if we go to um, ink here, if we go to the uh, this page here, here we have our T star multiplier table, table A2, and we can get from the infinite row down here, we can get our Z star values. So, in this infinite row, we want to get the 99% confidence interval, and that is uh, 2.576. So, not what I actually circled. This here, so 2.576. It's going back here. <coughs> we have our p hat value, which is 0.3 plus or minus the z star value, which we just looked up, 2.576. And then we use our standard error in the previous part. So times 0 0.0165. Okay. Uh, we can multiply the two numbers together to get our margin of error, which is 0 0.0425. And then we just add this um, and subtract this from 0.3. So that gets us a final answer of 0.2575 to 0.3425. All right. And that's our confidence interval. OK, so let's go ahead now um, and go to the next part, which has a lot of statements that may or may not be true.
Okay. So the following statements are being considered for in inclusion in the report to summarizing the study results. We need to figure out which of these statements are true and false. All right, so the first one, if this procedure were repeated many times, 99% of the resulting confidence intervals, so the resulting one from each repetition of this study, would contain the true population proportion of all teenagers who have shared an online password. And this is correct. This is a, the, exactly how you interpret a confidence level. And then the second one is close to that, but it says we would estimate the sample proportions um, by about the value in part A. And this isn't necessarily differing from each other, but they would differ from the mean. So this one isn't correct. That's not an incorrect interpretation of the standard error. Uh, the third one is exactly our interpretation of a confidence interval. With 99% confidence, we'd estimate the population proportion of whatever to be within our interval. So that one is true. Okay, and the next one, if the procedure were repeated many times, 99% of the resulting confidence intervals would contain the sample proportion of teenagers who have shared an online password. Uh, this is close, but the main problem here is sample. The sample proportion is always in your confidence interval. It's always the midpoint. So it's not 99% of the time, it's 100% of the time. So that one's out. Next one, there is a 99% chance the true population proportion of all teenagers who have shared an online password falls in the interval computed in Part B. And this one <coughs> is false because we can't talk about probabilities of a fixed value P being within this interval. A fixed value and a fixed interval, they're either the value is either going to be in there or it's not. So we can't have a 99% chance for that. So this one's false. And then lastly, if a, 99, if a conservative 99% confidence interval had been made using the same survey results, the margin of error would have been smaller than in Part B. And this is also false. A conservative 99% confidence interval is going to have a larger margin of error because it's conservative. Conservative meaning it covers more ground. You're going to, you know, be right more often of the time because you have more numbers in your interval. That's what makes it conservative. Okay, and then lastly, another news organization requests a new study be done so that a 99% confidence interval can be reported with a margin of error of only 3%, and one we computed had a little over 4%. So how many people are going to need to sample? And for this, we need to use the sample size formula. And we can find this uh, on, back on this page 2 of our formula card. So at the very top here, back in the population proportion box, uh, it gives us the sample size. So let's go ahead and go back to the problem. So here n is equal to z star over 2 times the margin of error. And if you recall from earlier, oh, and that's squared. And again, if you call, recall from earlier, we found z star to be 2.576. And the margin of error is 3%. So make sure to convert to a decimal when you plug it into this equation. Before you square this, uh, in the parentheses, you should get uh, 42.93, about. And once you square that, you get 1843.27. Now note that 1843.27 people, we can't sample that number of people. And if we were to only sample 1843, that would be just not quite enough to get a margin of error of at most 3%. You'd have a little bit above 3% for your margin of error. So that's, we, we have to round this number up. Even though we're closer to 1843, we still have to round this up to 1844. All right, and that's it for page seven of the exam.